So tell me if this has ever happened to you. You want to learn something new like coding or start some new project. You're really excited about it and for the first few days everything is going great. But then something happens. You no longer have the motivation you initially had and every single day instead of working on your new project you always just end up going to your bed and watching Netflix. You get stuck and you never seem to be able to finish that thing that you used to be so excited about. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing that again. Well, I wouldn't know anything about that because I am a productivity guru and us gurus, we never procrastinate. We are immune to all of that stuff. Yeah, that's not actually what happens. Well, the truth is, I don't stay motivated, but I put in the work anyway. Everything worth achieving is hard, at least at some level. And that's definitely true with coding. So there's necessarily going to be times where you're not going to feel motivated, where you're not gonna feel like doing the things that you actually have to do. So what you actually need to do is just do it, not through motivation, but through self-discipline. And I realized that this is something that's much easier said than done. So that's why in this video, I wanna talk about how I managed to build rock solid self-discipline and how you can do it too. But first, I wanna quickly introduce you to our sponsor. So I recently set myself the challenge of learning the Swift programming language. So with any sort of project like this, a part where most people actually struggle the most is just getting started and meeting that pesky procrastination. And the best tip I can give with this is to keep your why in mind. You wanna have a specific end goal that you keep in mind at all times because when it gets difficult, that is what's going to keep you going. For example, one very good motivator for learning to code fast is the hefty salaries that software engineers can make. But once you do make those hefty salaries, it's also really important to learn how to save and invest that money to make it grow even more. What I look for when I'm investing is not only high returns, but diversification. Today I want to talk to you about a very interesting alternative, art. The total wealth held in art is estimated to be worth 1.7 trillion dollars and Deloitte projects it to grow 900 billion by 2026. In addition, contemporary art pieces outpace the S&P 500 total return by 164% from 1995 to 2021. And I know you might be asking, well why should I care? I don't have money for that. Well that's where today's video sponsor Masterworks comes in. Masterworks is the only platform where you can invest in art just like two-thirds of billionaires do, but for just a fraction of what they pay. Through Masterworks, you can invest in a portion of many exclusive pieces of art. So far, Masterworks has successfully offered and sold three paintings, which each realizing a net annualized gain above 30% per work. Now, legally, I do have to add that this is not an indication of Masterworks' overall performance, and past performance is not indicative of future returns. But wow, 30 plus percent. And this price appreciation only goes up as inflation goes up, by the way. Currency sitting at 36% on average. Getting started with Masterworks is super easy. It only takes a few clicks. You visit their website, create an account, browse their artwork like this super cool looking one, and you can diversify your portfolio with one of the most stable assets around. Over 400,000 people have signed up, and you can gain priority access by clicking my link in the description below. And it also really supports the channel, so go check it out. Thanks for Masterworks for sponsoring this video, but do bear in mind that I am not your financial advisor and you should always do your own research because with everything investing, there is always some risk. Now back to the video. Motivation gets you going, but discipline keeps you growing. So with anything worth achieving in life, it usually works like this. You're here and your goals are here and in between, there's just a whole bunch of work that you need to somehow get done. Most people think that the way to bridge this gap is through motivation, but I don't think that's the best way at all. So the first step to getting out when you feel like you're stuck is to realize that it's absolutely normal to not feel motivated all the time. Once you realize this, you can stop worrying that there's something wrong with you because there's not and start focusing on the practical things that will actually allow you to start getting things done even when you don't feel like it. Like first of all, building the right habits. In other words, it's all about working smarter and I talk about that in depth on this video but in summary, first of all, you want to adopt a deep work strategy. The way our brains work is that the toughest part is always just starting. But once you do start, it's much easier to keep going. So once you're able to push through the initial hump, you need to be able to guard this state of focus by any means necessary. And I cannot stress how important this is. This means closing your door and putting on some lo-fi music, which has been scientifically shown to actually increase your concentration and focus. And throwing your phone out of the window. 
Okay, maybe it's enough to just put it on another room or just put it on silent or something. Once you work for a little bit, you'll find that you'll reach the state of flow, which will allow you to keep working potentially for hours on end without you ever even realizing how much time has passed. It might seem like a small thing, but science has actually shown that as little as your mum shouting at you to tell you that dinner will be ready in 30 minutes is enough to take your brain out of that flow state and it can actually take you up to 20 minutes for you to get back to the same level of focus. Just achieving the state of flow is one of the most important things you can do to keep your focus because when you're able to keep your focus, you're gonna be able to get done in one hour what someone with distracted focus might do in like three hours. So focus is king. But what I think is even more important than any of these productivity tricks or hacks is just your mindset and specifically becoming accountable to yourself and fundamentally altering the way you think about yourself in a way. So let me just explain what I mean by that. As humans, we tend to act in a way that matches the image that we have of ourselves. Let me give you an example. If you think you're a lazy person, if you tell yourself that you're a lazy person, it actually causes you to be more lazy. I'm just gonna challenge you to do this. From today, start telling yourself that you are the type of person who gets things done. You are the type of person who has really strong work ethic. You'll find that once you do this and you remind yourself of this constantly, you actually start to take actions that a hardworking and a disciplined person naturally takes because it's in accordance with the image that you yourself have of yourself. In the past, I used to be very physically unfit. I wasn't like super fat or anything, but I wasn't a very fit person. And that really lowered my self-esteem. I really didn't feel good about myself. That's how I saw myself as. But then one day I just decided, okay, I'm going to become the type of person who's physically fit. I'm going to become the type of person who exercises every day. I'm going to build a reputation for myself as a type of person who does these things. And I'm not saying I'm like a fitness model or anything today. But I'd say I'm really happy with my physical shape. And ever since I started doing that, it became such a part of me and the self-image that I have of myself that it was obvious that I'm gonna keep running, that I'm gonna keep going to the gym because it became a part of my identity. So if you wanna become disciplined, if you wanna start getting things done, you wanna build those qualities to be an integral part of your identity. So essentially, it just becomes a habit for you to be like that. It's frustrating to me to see how many people think that, for example, learning to code and becoming a software engineer is something where you need to be like born super smart or something like that. Or where if you wanna be physically fit, you just need to be born like that. When most things, like 99.9% .9 of things in life, don't work that way. Almost anything in life that you wanna learn or you wanna become, you can do by just putting in the work. It's really just that simple. Do it! Just do it! So if you take nothing else away from this video, I just want you to be able to adopt this growth mindset where you start believing that you can do anything. And that sounds like something very selfish or like egoistic, like, oh, I can do anything. It just means that whatever you put your time into, you're probably going to be able to do it. Because as Steve Jobs said, everything around you was built by people who are no smarter than you. No one's really special. There are just some people who believe that they can do it. So that then causes them to put in the work to actually do it, and then what do you know, they end up succeeding. Sure, there's always some luck involved, but the question is, are you going to be the type of person who focuses on the external factors, the factors that you cannot control, which do exist, I don't deny that, or are you the type of person who focuses on yourself and the things that you can control? So in summary, the reason why you can't stay motivated when learning to code is because that's just how the human brain works, and that's okay. So the way you fix not having motivation is by not trying to fix it at all, because you really can't. You need to stop waiting for motivation to come to you because it probably won't. Because motivation is something that's really hard to control, no matter how hard you try. What you wanna do instead is become the type of person who puts in the work no matter what, every single day. But if you're trying to learn how to code, even that is not actually enough. You also need to learn the right methods and strategies to actually learn and internalize the things that you're learning. So if you want to learn more about that, you should watch this video right here where I talk about how I was finally able to figure out how to study effectively and force my brain to learn how to code.